Hello everyone! Today we're going to build a function to validate if a string is a palindrome or not. We start filtering characters to check only numbers or letters. Then check if word is empty. We create the indices. We create a loop to iterate the word from the edges using the indices. It will end if we reach the middle. And of course, we need to check if edge characters are not same. If that's the case, we invalidate this word as a palindrome. And finally, if we end the loop, that means this word is a palindrome and we return true. Cool, that's it! Now let's test our... Wait a second... What? Cannot subscript string with an int? What? That's correct! Unlike other languages, in Swift you cannot iterate a string using an int index. But why? We will explain that in this video and maybe save your life in an interview. My name is Pete. And this, this is Swift and Tips. Okay, before I start, let me tell you there exists a workaround to use int indices in a string. Well, not exactly a string. No, you will see that. We can transform a string into an array of characters. And voila! We can now use int indices. Let's run this one. Sounds easy, right? But here is a problem. We are consuming a lot of memory doing that because every letter must be inserted in a new array. This might work fine for a short string, but think that we might store a long one, even a book. We are duplicating the space consumed by this function just because we need to use int indices. Definitely, we need an optimized way to iterate a string in Swift. Let's see what is a string and how Swift handling this under the hood. Okay, first off, what is a string? A string is simple the representation of a series of characters, such as hello world or this is Swift and tips, wink. Swift strings are represented by the string type, of course. Although, as you saw earlier, there are many ways to represent it. For example, arrays of characters. A string is a monster, and it has been evolving in each new iteration of Swift. Look at all the protocols that a string is conforming. We could talk hours about how a string is composed. But this time, let's focus on how Swift is building a set of characters into a string object. A string is a value type. It's actually a struct. And you can see more about value versus reference type or struct versus classes in the video, in the card, or in the description below if you want to know more about it. You can use a for loop to iterate a string and each element will be represented as an object of type character. Here is the interesting part. String and character types support Unicode to represent each character. If you don't know what is Unicode, let's say that it's an international standard that supports encoding and decoding for thousands of different characters, symbols, and why not, emojis from many countries and writing systems. This is very nice because we generate compatibility between software systems. For example, this is really useful in web. This keeps all the text represented in the web well supported by different browsers and regions in the world. Every character in Swift is represented by Unicode scalar values. Each scalar is a 21-bit hexadecimal number that represents a character, modifier, or even 
an emoji and can be encoded in other different formats like UTF-8 or UTF-16. A character in the screen can be composed by one or more scalar values that produce a single human readable character. That sequence of scalars is called extended grapheme cluster. This extended grapheme cluster is key to understand why we cannot use in indices in Swift. Let's see an example. We have letter E with acute or ascent, and for us, it's just one symbol that is part of the Unicode standard. But it turns out that we can build that letter E with ascent from different ways. For example, we can build that character using directly the scalar value. For that, we use backslash U and between curly brackets, the hexadecimal scalar value, in this case, E9. This is really cool, but we can get the same result combining a regular letter E and a cute symbol. Let's see that. Here is another example with a Korean symbol. Even you can make crazy combinations like building a family emoji. By the way, you can use Character Viewer in macOS if you want to try building more symbols, check out the link in the description from NS Hipster. You get the idea. A single character is the result of one or many scalar values. But then, how Swift is counting those characters? As we saw earlier, we can iterate with a for loop, a string, and get each character. But also, we can use count property to get the number of characters in that string. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, 7 characters. Swift used the extended grapheme cluster to do the counting process. In other words, the final combination of scalars for each character, and not each individual scalar. Here's an example with the word café in Spanish. That means coffee or brown color, depending on the context. The first word, café, with regular E, returns 4, has the number of characters. But if you combine an acute Unicode character at the end, we end up with café with ascent, and the count value is still the same. For Swift, café and café have the same amount of characters. And for you too. This is the actual problem. Extended grapheme cluster can be composed by multiple Unicode scalars. This means that different characters and different representations of the same character can require different amount of memory to store. Thinking in terms of regular arrays, how can Swift know the amount of memory for each character? It can't. In regular array, each element can be identified because the amount of memory is reserved in a dedicated space and we just jump from one element to the next one by using an in index. The problem here is that a string is not an array. Swift needs to figure out the scalar values every time we access a character contained in a string. In other words, the number of characters in a string cannot be calculated without iterating through the string to determine its extended graphene cluster boundaries. And here is another important thing. If you are working with long strings, be aware that count property is expensive because we must iterate over the Unicode scalars in the entire string in order to determine the characters for that string. Okay, we now understand that Swift cannot figure out what is the concrete memory without iterating the whole string and figure out what are the scalar values for each 
character. That's the reason we cannot use dedicated in subscript in this case. But is there a way to use indices in strings? Actually, yes. Let's refactor our is palindrome function and see what is the right way to use indices for a string. First off, let's replace the array of characters and go back to what we had originally. Okay, now take a look at word count. Let's replace the count property here. As we saw earlier, count is a bit expensive because we need to count all the characters in the string and that might impact our code if the string is too long. But be careful, I'm not saying don't use count anymore. If you're required to count the number of characters, this is the property you need to use. But in this case, we only care if the string is empty or not. For that, we can replace this one with is empty property. This operation is constant. Use it instead of count equal zero. And finally, the indices. Instead of in values, a string has its own dedicated type of indices called string.index. We will use the property start index from word variable to represent the first index position. With this string.index, Swift can figure out how to iterate over each character. Now let's go to an index. The natural way to proceed is just using word.nindex, but here is the thing. An index is the index after the final character. And if you try to access the string with this index right away, well, you will get a crash because this index is out of bounds already. Instead of declaring an index in this way, we need to assign the index before this word.nindex. And to do that, we have a method in the string type to move a string index back and forth. For this case, let's use word.index before. Excellent, now an index is well positioned in the last character. And if you notice, we are not seeing any issue here anymore. Finally, let's fix the increasing and decreasing of the indices. As you saw earlier, to move an index back, we need to use index before method. We will do the same here. But in this case, this will be related to the same end index. And for the start index, yeah, there is another method to move after the current string. Let's use index after. That's all. <sighs> okay, let's finally test our function. Pretty nice. Still being true because we don't care about these special symbols. What about the number? In this case, we are checking also numbers and this word is not a palindrome. Very nice. Did you know all this about the strings in Swift? What is your strategy to work with the strings? Let me know in the comments what do you think about all of this. If you want to learn more about Soscript, check out this video here. And if you want to learn more about Swift in general, check out this playlist here too. That's all for me guys. Thank you so much and have a great day.